Ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Sherm in the Booth. Ooh, ooh. My name is Sherm. You guys are some true Chicagoans for coming out in January. It's snowing outside, it's freezing, and you're at the fucking club at 1 a.m. Boys with the bass, yeah, boys, boys, bass. Who am I talking to right now? You're famous. <laughs> free food, free drinks, music, girls, let's, let's go. go. Do you like it? Cool. If you don't, goodbye. <laughs> I'm missing the most important part. Boys with the bass. We should throw like a crazy like bar mitzvah party. This, this is crazy. Send me stems. I finished <laughs> it. Hey, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Just wait. You know it kicks in like three to five seconds afterward. <laughs> <clears throat> Yo, yo, what's good, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Sherman the Booth. I'm, of course, your host, Sherman, and today is Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022, and this is episode 197. Wow, we are so close to the big 200, but let's take a second to get hyped for this episode because it is with one of my favorite DJ producers in the game, Return of the Jaded. Now, some of you might remember, I've actually already interviewed Return of the Jada before, but that was actually premiering his record on Hood Politics, and that was such a blast. Did it with DJ Susan, but I got to tell you, it was awesome to go one-on-one with him here and get his full story. In 197, we got it all in and started by talking about his journey into house music. Born in Romania, but raised in Canada, Zoltan has always had a passion for music. He started making rap beats in his early days, but eventually fell in love with dance music and the limitless range of creativity he could achieve. Return of the Jada was born in 2013 with one purpose, to offer a fresh alternative to current trends in dance music. He continues to push the envelope on what's possible as a producer, further proving that ROTJ is an extremely unique and special project. I had such a blast running through Return of the Jaded's discography, and I gotta say, it is dense and full of incredibly well-produced and profound originals, collabs, and remixes. We ran through some of his cornerstone productions like Did You Take My Money with Juliette Sakura on Suara, Soma EP on Purified, I'm In Love With You featuring Melio on Techni, and of course his most recent release, Polite, with Malokio on Sink or Swim. I'd highly recommend putting his music on shuffle and just enjoying yourself. Now, throughout the interview, Zoltan gave us the behind-the-scenes look at his production style and approach to a lot of his tracks. He's been producing for over 10 years and shared some of his humble approaches and styles for creating new music. In particular, during the discography portion, we discussed how some of his early productions are now coming full circle into some of his recent tracks. The evolution of his sound is still built upon the core foundations that he started with. Always stay true to what inspires you. If you haven't heard of Return of the Jaded already, well, let this be your friendly kick in the ass to hop on the ROTJ train because this guy is seriously special. Not only is he an amazing DJ producer, but gosh dang it, he's an all-around good guy who genuinely loves music. Thank you so much for making the time to come on the show, and I can't wait to meet you in person one day very soon. We're definitely going to party, that's for sure, my man. Now let's get into it right now so you guys can hear a story for yourselves. This is episode 197 with Return of the Jaded. Last time on the show, it was uh, fucking Susan. He was like, return, return, return. <laughs> I, I can't I do the same intro, but uh, <laughs> like, yo, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. We're going to, we're going to, I'm sure we're, he's going to come up a few times. Yeah, this, this was Susan. He's like, he's like, what's up, everybody? This is Susan. Good call for this. We got return, return, return the What up, gang? Legend. King and all of the above. I love you. You're fucking legends. And that was my Susan impersonation. Wow. We're kicking it off right there. Jaded, you are, you just did the intro for Sherman the Boot. That was a DJ Susan impersonation, everybody. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. That was unbelievable. <laughs> oh, man. All you have to do is spend one, one weekend with him, and then you're like, this guy's a fucking movie character. He, he is a movie close. character. He really is. Like I, the things that come out of his mouth without any hesitation or likes ands, you knows, or buts, it's unbelievable. It's like his it's like he knows the script, but nobody else does, right? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you, you fucking Susan. We're talking about you again. 
Shout out to DJ Susan, man, dude. We let's talk about it right away because he came, he brought you out for your first show in San Diego. Uh, when was that? That was cross weekend in September last September, year. September, yeah. September hood poly anniversary on the boat. My God, and that was a fucking lineup too. How much fun was that? The the, the lineup was sick. Deeper purpose. Fuck. Um, Broken future, right? Broken Future, Canadian dudes, fucking awesome dudes as well. Yep. Uh, all around great lineup, but most importantly, like great people to hang out with. Like these guys are legendary and full of energy. Like it's just it's just uncomparable to what we have here in Canada. Like yeah. it, it's hard to find that level of energy here sometimes, yeah. especially in the winter when everyone's like oh, <laughs> depressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's consistent energy. That's what it is too. That is consistent yeah. energy. I I mean, I've learned so much from kind of how they do things. Like, I mean, they're, they're, you know, Southern California, which is obviously chill and a lot of aspects of how they live their life are chill, but they like just shower you with love and affection and attention. And you're like, wow, like you make me feel so good about myself. And it's just yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. They make you feel involved too. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And the the inter- interesting thing about San Diego is I met up with, uh, or not met, I, I just met some other guys uh, who are also DJs, promoters in the area. Yeah. They also have a very similar energy, like very positive, very loving. Yeah. Like, yo, like, let's get, get you down here. We'll book you. I'm like, awesome, man. This is great. Yeah. yeah. And they follow through on that shit too. They're not just like talking out their ass. And, and it's uh, refreshing. It's refreshing because the scene, you know, if, if you're in it for a longer time, it can get stale or yeah. you, you can get like jaded like I am. And uh, you're like, wow, <laughs> okay, there's this is like some cool people out there still who still do it for the scene, for the love. And yep. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. That's, that's why I started this podcast. I, I want to do it for the culture and, and I want to give artists, I mean, obviously you're, you're, doing great right now but like in the beginning days right i just wanted to give people a platform to tell their story and now five years later 197 episodes in you know i'm interviewing someone like you who's just killing it right now man and it's an honor to have you on the show for real thanks man thank you thank you it's an honor to be here of course you know like you said last time we had you on was on a hood politics live stream but I'm such a big fan of you and your music. And it was a true pleasure, like going through your discography the past couple of weeks. Cause I wanted to really like get the full story of return of the jaded started in 2013, all the way through now we're going to get into your music, man. But I think it's definitely important. We talk about how you got to where you're at now. And yeah. I know Canada, you know, is where you were, were you born in Ottawa then? Right? No, I was born in uh, Romania. Romania, uh, yeah. I was well, born in Romania, came to Canada in 1995. Okay, uh, on the Quebec side, which is the French-speaking side. Right. So went to French school until university, which was 2007-ish. And then I, I just went straight to English, and then brushed up on my English literature skills, speaking skills, and uh, wait. So, is English your third language? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, actually, fourth, because uh, first language is Hungarian, right? Romanian, and then I spoke Romanian, French, and then English. <laughs> <What>? the <heck? laughs> Dude, your English is supreme. Are you kidding me? Well, right, right now it's pretty much my first language. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's yeah. amazing. How did how did you learn to speak English so well then? Uh, watching The Simpsons and Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And family matters. <laughs> Five o'clock TV, man. Come yeah, man. You sit down and you just you really want to learn. You want to understand what they're saying. So you would time yes. just absorb, you know. I've heard that yeah. from a lot of my uh European friends, Eastern European friends too. They always talk about like the cartoon shows, Dexter's Laboratory, and, and all that sort of stuff. And I mean it's true. It's true. You see people actually speak it, whether it's in real life or on television, and when you're younger, you can absorb it and that's amazing. And, it, and yeah, when you're younger, you know, you, you absorb things way faster. Yeah. Uh, if you try to do that now, it's going to be a fail for sure. But when you're a kid, <laughs> man, it's easy. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. So when, when did you actually, like, start taking music seriously then? I mean, you hadn't mentioned up until when, after 2007? Um, 
I, I guess I was always musically inclined since yeah. since being a kid. But uh, my first software was, I think I was about 12, 13. My cousin came to visit from Europe and he, he told me to download this software. I think it was called Magix or Magic. And um, then my, bro- my brother bought me EJ98. I don't know mm. if you remember that software. It's very old software, very that basic. It's come up once before, yeah. Yeah, EJ, and then from then progressed to some free ones, then Fruity Loops. So I was always like introduced and pushed kind of towards uh, uh, yeah. making music. I did a lot of hip hop beats when I was in high school. Yeah. Kind of like sold it to the MCs here. And yeah, 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 yeah. I was I was actually a, a, a hip hop DJ before anything electronic. <clears throat> no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would would scratch during shows. So I was the guy in the back when people were rapping in the front. <laughs> Holy shit. What do you know? The things we find out on Sherman the Booth, baby. That's amazing. Absolutely. So you were producing before you were DJing then? It's just like like a little bit at least? Yes. Yes. Because I didn't have, uh, you know, like DJ, DJ gear is very expensive, especially for a teenager who doesn't have a job. So yeah. uh, I had some like shitty old turntables that I used for scratching and then over the time, I acquired some DJ equipment, but yeah, producing all you needed was a computer. So I always had a computer. Yes, so that was easy. You were hooked, yeah. though. Hooked, like hooked. Is that what you said? Yeah, hooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, hooked. Immediately hooked. It didn't take very long <laughs> to uh, to get hooked on. I mean, you, fuck, it's 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 awesome. It's like sculpting or or, or molding something, but digitally. You know? I was I was into computer games. You know, I think I think it's Moby that said that producers are really like computer nerds that try to look cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you kind of live in the computer either way. And I think <clears throat> like in terms of music production, specifically like working in a digital audio workspace, people yeah. think, oh, you have to play an instrument or you have to know how to sing or you have to understand music theory when especially dance music. I mean, we're making happy accidents a lot of the time, right? Like we don't really like know what we're doing, at least in the beginning. That's how I felt. I still sometimes feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but you just got to have fun with it. And, and that's part of being like a computer nerd, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the time will come, Sherm, where, where you will be able to just be like, I want this sound. And then you yeah. will just make that sound Yeah. as opposed to trying a bunch of different things and like, Oh, okay. This is close enough, kind of thing. Yeah. It took me. It took me a very long time to get to that point, though. And I'm still. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to be arrogant. I'm still like going through presets, and then I, yeah, this is kind of cool. But yeah, I'm way more confident now in imagining a sound in my head and just mm. doing that sound as I was five years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And that just comes with practice and repetition and making mistakes. I, I imagine you're humble enough. Absolutely. To admit, right. Exactly. Yeah. You have absolutely, to. and this is something that comes up all the time too. I feel like a lot of people are they're really embarrassed or not embarrassed, they're just not comfortable putting out music because they're worried about what others might think. And I mean, as a producer, it's like it's a little scary sometimes, but you got to put it out there, you got to learn, you got to get feedback, and just keep putting it out there. You, you <laughs> the, I think that's a, a constant struggle. You got to find the, the fine line between being overconfident and mm-hmm. arrogant where you think everything you make sounds amazing and then being, uh, you know, insecure about your music. Mm. Once you find that middle line where you're still kind of like questioning yourself and you perfect your sound. Yeah. Then, then, then you got a good thing going on. And, and it's, it's, it's always like the pendulum is swinging, you know, you gotta like always bring it back or tone it down when your head gets too big. You gotta be like, yo, like that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Take a gram of mushrooms and like reflect on your. uh, Yes. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely absolutely it's important mindfulness that's what it's all about baby yeah <laughs> absolutely. okay so 2013 you released your first track though but we kind of have this interim did you have another music project that you were doing because your first release is return of the jaded it is it's a high quality production it's not some like soundcloud you know i put this out to the world what happened yeah. before that first release it was uh just me my solo project under uh Zoltan contest K O N T S, mm-hmm. uh, and it was doing okay. Like I did remix. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I did remix Danny Tanaglia, uh, Chusen Ceballos. Wow, 
uh, before he got to work on some pretty like classic tracks with Jerome Robbins, but it, it, it was just like not getting enough traction. And, yeah. and, and around that time, there was a weird period where techno and tech house became a little stale. Yeah. And, um, that's where deep house started really becoming huge yeah. globally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I went to Amsterdam. I, I got inspired at EDE. And I was like, yo, we need to get on this train right now. This is dope. There's melodies in the music. There's mm-hmm. feelings. There's like, it just, it, before it was very like robotic music, yeah. zero feelings, just two yeah. notes, drums, percussion, that's it. And I'm yeah. like, it's like boring. This is then, and instead of making deep house or more deep house influenced stuff, and it just, mm-hmm. I, I mean, look, I, I used to make hip hop beats where there's melodies and feelings involved. So I, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I was always better at that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's a mature move of you because I think a lot of people, I've interviewed a lot of people that have had one, two or three projects, right? And sometimes they're going really well. I've interviewed a lot of house DJs. I know you know Cloverdale, right? Yeah. Cloverdale was a dubstep producer and was killing it doing really really well but his heart wasn't in it and it was hard for him to say i could keep following this dream and you know pursuing it it's going great right now but where do i want to be five years from now i want to be making the music that really makes an impact not only on others but most importantly myself and yeah sounds like you were like i have to do that as well oh for sure for sure for sure same with the broken future guys i think they were into more bassy stuff as well yeah and then they're like, well, this is not what, what we really want to do. I'm not going to speak for them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very similar situation as well. For sure. Um, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love the, the underground tech house minimal stuff too. Like time and a place for everything. But yeah, I wanted Return of the Jada to be a more deep sounding project. Now, since then, it's, it's, it's evolved into different things. But yeah, but that, that was the start of it for sure. What's yeah. the story behind the name Return of the Jaded? So Return of the Jaded, there's three of us originally. I don't know mm-hmm. if I told you this before. I there's three that. guys. And, and, and I think we just needed something. Some, You know, you, you can name something like Tree or or Pink Vase or something. But, but we needed the name that's that's going to stick. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Um, and we were Jaded. So Return of the Jedi... Mm. For Jedi, jaded, yes, and boom, there you go. Because people were like, "Oh yeah, Return of the Jedi, or jaded." I heard that before, and then it just sticks with you. It I does, think. dude. <laughs> and and abbreviated to ROTJ is like sick. Like I have it all over my notes here. I'm like ROTJ. Yeah, fuck yeah, Return of the Jaded. It just sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It looks good. It sounds good. It feels good to say. It's a great name. And and I could be wrong, but at the time too, like a lot of artists had some like crazy long names too i don't know if you know a uh, zombie disco squad for example yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? i was dead yes but he used to be zombie disco squad and yes squad. dude and, and he goes by zds now doesn't he zds exactly <laughs> he's got to go back to zombie disco squad i, I like that i agree it's so much better come on man zds <laughs> man you gotta stay return to the jaded because it works <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It, what what I would like to do right now, though, I'm not going to lie, is I want to collab with Jaded, hmm. the group Jaded. Yeah. So it's Return of Jaded, Jaded, call it track Jaded something. That would be bomb. Yeah, they're killing it. Didn't they just say, is it one or two guys? I think it's three guys. Three guys, yeah. Oh, yeah. Baby. yeah they just had a Sink or Swim release, didn't they? Yeah, Lost Myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a week before my track, actually. I know. I got a little confused. I was like, <laughs> did they get his name wrong? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a lot of people also tag me uh, in their Instagram <laughs> posts when it's a jaded track. So, bro, like, come on, put some effort into it. You know, it's put some effort kidding. into it. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a collab for sure. We got to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll reach out to them. I'll, I'll I'll make something work soon. Please do keep me posted. CC me on that email, okay. Or BCC we'll me if you want. Please BCC, yeah, yeah, yeah BCC. BCC. <laughs> no one has to know. No one, <laughs> no one has to know. <laughs> okay, so I was interesting. You said you went to Amsterdam and listened to a lot of Deep House because I believe your first release as Return of the Jaded was 
a remix of Ray Dupree's Danger Zone? Do you know, was that the first? Uh, no, 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 no. It was, uh, it, it was on, on Craft Tech, Pleasure Crafts label. Oh, yes, yes. Remember right. when Pleasure Craft used to be super housey, deep housey? Super housey, absolutely. And, and, they, and, and then uh, Josh Butler had a, a, a release. It was part of the VA. I forgot what the name of the track was, but the, that track won track of the year. And my track was part of that compilation too. Mm -hmm. and, and it's called Lolita. Lolita. Yes, I love Lolita. I know you're going to love this one too. Let's check out Return of the Jaded's first track. This one's called Lolita off Craft Tech. Come on. So that was the first Jaded track officially. And then we moved to Kitball with, with a track or it's an EP called uh, What's It Gonna Take? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think the, uh, the the Ray Dupree remix came like a few tracks after that. But yeah, th those two tracks were the, the two big ones that kind of put Jaded on the map at the time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, on 303 Lovers and Kitball, both incredible releases in, in 2014 and I, I, you have so much music. I, I tried to figure out the best way to go about it. Like if it was up to me, we'd sit here all day and go through every track and you'd walk me through the project. So I can, yeah. learn. but I need, uh, to remind myself too sometimes when I have to look at the list, dude, I went on your beat port and I was like, whew, thank God I'm working on this in advance right now. Cause you got a dense discography built in, but I mean, seriously, you're at 120,000 monthly Spotify listeners. Awesome. Right. Like you're just, you're, you're firing on all cylinders and it's so sick to see, man. You know, not, not that monthly listeners is, is a definition of how successful you are, but it is great to see that, you know, you've got fans out there that are supporting your music. You're getting playlisted on all the right ones and just everybody knows who you are, but that's why it's like fun for me to go back to 2013, 2014, 2015 jaded and hear all this incredible deep house. And then we'll talk about some of your recent releases um, that I believe, you know, still have a little bit of that flair that didn't disappear, but kind of went to the background in the 2016s. But I mean, with the track, like, um, I'm trying to remember RH2, uh, and Caballero recordings, right? Some of those releases that you had out, you remember those? Uh, what is the track called again? Uh, Sorry. I can't remember what the track was called. It was on RH2 though. Uh, one sec. Let me just look that up real quick. Uh, yeah, wanna... let's look it up here. Let's look it up here, people. Uh, sometimes, sometimes a lot of these. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Montezuma remix. Yes, yes, yeah. right. It's like the, the, so. That's a that's an example of of just like straight tech house. No, yep. no, no chords, no melodies. Just like <laughs> drums and a bass drums. line. Drums. <laughs> minimalistic yeah. version of you but still a great track so so that's the part where me me and uh the the the, uh, the producer simon shepherd was a huge uh part of early uh return of the jaded yeah um that's where he started going a bit more like minimal uh more underground stuff and then yeah and then just like pull back and forth between me and him mm -hmm. yeah so but but so, Sometimes you just got to make a track that's, you know, when I approach a project, it's what's the best for this project? What's the mm -hmm. best remix for this project? Yeah. Not force my sound on something that's not going to work. Yeah, absolutely. So I, mean, I think for that track, we felt that the, the more underground route was uh, more appropriate. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the Kitball EP is, is, is awesome. And yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's it's funny to look back because you had a lot of music out, right? But hearing your story now, you were in the studio, like you were making a lot of music because the years that followed, 
I mean, you're just churning it out, man. Do you remember that time, like in between 2013 and 2015? Were you learning your process? I mean, you rebranded, so you had to have some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, dude, it was, that's what we did on, on our free time. It's uh, yeah. let's go to the studio and bust out some tracks. Fuck yes. And sometimes you're there and when there's three of you working or two of you working together, the other guy works on a track and you're just like in the back, like hearing the same loop over and over again for hours. Like it can be very long and yeah. painful at times. <laughs> yeah. You got to put it in though. It's like we said in the beginning, it's part of the process. Exactly. exactly. You got to put good it in times Very, very cool memories. Like we, we, we had a lot of good memories when there was three of us. It was fun for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Was um, and th this is one that we have to quickly talk about. Your remix of Nora and Pierre's "You Got My Body." Was that all three of you that made that together then? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's when there was still three of us. I mean, I, that's I, I have good memories making. Remember making that track, man. Like, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. I mean, and look where look where Nora's at now, and look where you're at too. I mean, you've now released on Purified twice. She supports your music, like. That was in 2015, dude. That was fucking six, seven years ago, bro. I know. <laughs> don't, re don't remind me how quick the time goes, man. No, I think that's awesome. Like, that is inspiring to me, right? Like, Because I'm like seven years in the game now, right? And I'm thinking, well, shit, where am I going to be seven years from now? And I'm, it's like, I don't know, but it's, it's cool to see someone like you, like, still fucking killing it. Still doing yeah, it. Yeah, man. Uh you're also in an interesting time right now because Tech House has become the most popular genre right now in electronic music. It's the yeah. new EDM, right? Well, it is. So, so if you've been making Tech House for the past five years, now now is your time to shine. Like, let's go, push yourself. So, yeah, yeah. So, dude, like, it's, it's, it's a lot about timing, too. Yeah. Like when you got to, like, pop and not pop, like, you just got to be patient sometimes. You do got to be patient. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You got to You got to continue to fine tune your sound. And again, that's why it's like, I think it's awesome to hear the music that you released in the early days. And now that sound has evolved for you. And I mean, I don't want to assume, but that's why you're fucking killing it more than ever. These past two years for you, your music. The compositions, the quality, the collabs, everything, the exposure, the support. You're riding the wave too, man. But you've been fucking on that wave, right? And it's like a huge yeah, yeah. fucking wave right now. And it's like, that's why it's exciting to see you doing well. Because I know you deserve it. Because you put in the time. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I mean, when I first started first started taking this super seriously, it was uh, the, the big room stuff that was very big. Yeah. Uh, big room, EDM, whatever you want to call it. Progressive house. Right. Progress, progressive house <laughs> uh, but, but like and i was like I, i'm not gonna do it i, I can't do it I, I i'm gonna take the long steady road up instead of just yeah you know, absolutely so. i know we don't so it, it so so to, it does feel nice to get some recognition after yeah. like years absolutely. for sure for sure um so moving on to 2016 and 2018 this era of rotj this is this is a special time as a longtime fan of you because this is when I first discovered you. But before we got into the first track that I heard from you, I want to talk about your work CP on great stuff because to me, this is when had, had was it still all three of you at this point? I think at this point it was just two of us. Okay, because I, I was gonna yeah. say I kind of I kind of felt a shift in the energy a little bit. Like it's the same lane, but you were going a little bit faster, if that makes sense. Like get that moment. It's a sick track. Works is a jam. And that's right as a supreme groover. I mean, I have to imagine you guys were approaching music a little bit differently, especially if it was only like you two. Do you remember yeah. what you were thinking about, what you were inspired by? Well, there's, there's a few things. At this point, the Deep House from 2012, 2013 became, it, it, became, it transformed into this uh, a, a future house. Is that what it's called? Future yeah, house, like the whatever, Oliver, Oliver Heldens. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And then we're like, <laughs> that's not what we're we're about so yeah. once again we had to like kind of reinvent ourselves yeah so um yeah i'm just checking the tracks on beat for like what kind of tracks were we were doing around that time so we're like okay hey, we need to like uh, kind of re-examine re what we want to do again and so it was kind of like a finding ourselves period as well but that's yeah. that's also the time that we had a lot of good uh releases on kitball 
yeah especially like night's watch old school love and and rumble which is rumble rumble is like one of my best tracks to this day yeah like, yeah well you know we got to check this one out this one's called rumble by paco and return of the jaded off get ball records I think it was released around that time, if I'm not mistaken. I'm checking here to double check. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like it, it came out a few months after uh, the tracks you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a really big year for you guys. I mean, at least that two year period because a big cornerstone, and I'm going to bring up a few of these, but in, in my eyes, and correct me if I'm wrong, did you take my money with Juliet Sakura on Suara? This was where I first heard of you. Like you leveled up and I got to tell you a quick story, bro. Like this was legit. One of the first house songs that really made me want to be a house DJ. And oh, yeah. I like vividly remember playing it during my first house set. I'm telling you, like wow. I still have my first house set. Uh, it was in, it was right after the song was released sometime in 2016, I think, or maybe late 2016. And I remember playing it and just thinking like, did you take my money? And then it goes, boom. And I'm like, that is so sick. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I want to be, a, how, I, I want to play that. I want to feel it. I want to see how people react to this. And it's just such a great track, man. It like has a special place in my heart. So I wanted to share that story with you. Well, now that I told that story, you got to hear this track. This one's called, Did You Take My Money? By Return of the Jaded and Juliet Sakura on Suara. What we're going to do right here is go back. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. That yeah. track is very uh, loosely uh, inspired by uh, Sydney Charles' "Rough Line." Yeah, an organ in there, the, the the like funky grooves, funky drums, and yes. they were like, "I want to make something like that." And then, yeah, did you take my money? Happened. Yeah, that that was. Yeah, that's. I still play that out, man. Did you take my money? I still play that <laughs> Me out. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. And I mean, I saw you do this, like Suara ran by Koyu and it's still such a reputable label known globally. And um, I think it was on one of their uh, like, you know, compilations and I think so. Yeah. 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 It's a standout the cool track on that whole be, label. The, the thing is like, the cool thing is when you release on a, a label like Suara, it, it just automatically opens doors to other labels. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that helped a lot, honestly. Yeah. Totally. Got a lot it kind of gave us direction like okay we, we got this going for us mm -hmm. maybe we should focus on this kind of things this yeah. kind of this kind of style vibe a little bit yeah absolutely and I mean, like, you, kind of, yeah you followed it up with what did i tell you with juliet again on relief you got the chicago relief record shirt on definitely again let's go shout out relief records baby um i mean you guys obviously had a style like who who is uh who is juliet sakura she is uh, one of the label bosses at uh, Kidball. Ah, okay. Yeah, she's she's a she's a she's she signed the second Return of the Jaded record, so she will always have a special place oh. in my heart. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, when I went to Germany, stayed at her place. She got me a few gigs there, so like, 
She's very cool. She's very cool. And she, she's, she's fucking killing it right now, too. Yes. Yeah. I saw the name and I was like, I feel like these guys, they have a history. Because, I mean, yeah, this is still early on in your careers. And look at you now, man. Fucking yeah, yeah. What did I tell you? Absolutely. That it's another track. It still works like. for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, but both of those. And God, they're so good. And I'm, I'm glad that you said, like, you kind of realize this works. And you didn't, you didn't stick solely to that, but it certainly helped you with the direction. I mean, as a producer who was releasing good music, it was being well received. What's it like to have a label, a reputable label at that, pick up your track and then open other doors? Do you feel like, okay, this is the direction I have to go or is it just a confidence booster? Um, well, you know, the part we were talking about, like questioning your music. And yeah. Wondering if it's good. Well, th these things just reaffirm uh your thoughts and uh yeah. it definitely does give you a little bit of direction because you know you you have a you have a, a track that works but this is the cliche thing to say but making a track like a, a like a follow-up hit song is 10 times harder yeah you, you can't just copy yourself and expect same results you gotta improve on yourself or like kind of like and, and um yeah what did i tell you was the follow-up that worked yeah but then but then I was like, I don't think I can do this a third time. You yeah. kind of have to, like, <laughs> to innovate on yourself, do different things. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I forgot what the question was. If <laughs> That's the answer. No, that's the answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's the thing too. And it, it's really a perfect segue because going into 2019 through now, it's like a fusion of all of those different releases that we talked about, right? Like if we go all the way to your most recent Sink or Swim release, like Polite, it, uh, I mean, it's fucking unbelievable. I know you how I know you know how good that track is, but I hear a lot of the old jaded with the new jaded, and it's like <laughs> it's like holy shit, dude! Like he's really coming into his own. Your lane just opened up, and it's like this is me. It's anything on this street, and that's what as a producer I'm inspired by. And I know there's a lot of producers that watch this podcast that feel okay. I've, I have had a head track. Do I have to do the same thing again? There's really no right answer, but you should, the reaffirmation is, is very, very important. I like that. I, I think uh, as a producer, instead of you trying to find what your sound is that's uh, consistent throughout your tracks, yeah, just be you and, and other people will, will hear that consistency. Mm. I have no idea what, what, what a jaded sound is to me. Yeah. I, I, I can't like tell you right now, but I know other people will be like, yeah, that's, that's a return of jaded thing to do. I'm like, what? Oh, you know, the way you do your hi-hats. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, like... Yeah. yeah. You're having fun with it. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, just just do you, man. You you will get a consistent sound and uh, don't force it. I, I'm, I'm at a point, man, where I'm just going to make Deep House, House, Progressive House under one name, and I just don't care anymore. Yeah. I don't, I don't care to, uh, yeah, to be a mold. Yeah, right. And I, I agree with you there. I feel like when I was kind of trying to figure out like what to do and, and what sound to have, I mean, you're inspired by things and you have reference tracks, but it's like we talked about with uh, Cloverdale and Broken Future in yourself. It's like, what's going to work for me long term? It's not a certain sound or a certain lane. It's just making sure that I'm having fun with the process of making music. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with the final product. Absolutely. I mean, what you put out there is forever. So you really have to make sure that this is the best you can do mm. for this project. I think you, you have to be hard on yourself, not overly hard, but you do have to be hard on yourself. I think a lot of people are not hard on themselves enough, especially yeah. like beginner producers. Yeah. They, they kind of like settle too quick on mm. a sound. So that's, that's really important because, you know, you don't want to be that guy that looks back and you be like, oh, I kind of, I released that track and now, now you're stuck with it. <laughs> yeah, forced. Unless, unless you, you do like Hudson City too and you just start a new alias and you start making bangers from the first track on. Wait, yeah. what's his new alias? Well, Hudson City 2 is the alias. Oh, He's right, the, right, right. I think he was just uh, Padley, what's his name? He yeah, yeah, just yeah. released with, under his name, right? You're right. Yeah. So 2019 through now, we were talking about it. I mean, Bing fucking Bong. Bro, seriously, like you came to play amazing label releases, Repopulate Mars, Purified, Incorrect, Rossum Records, Box of Cats, Techni, Hood Poly, Spinning, Sink or Swim. 
you're a humble guy, but I'm going to give you a round of applause. Okay. Because I know, you know, in 2020 and 2021 and really almost through now, it's, it's a tough time, you know, as a producer, right? Like you're someone who loves to perform and you weren't able to perform your music. Like, yeah, still stayed that was like, tough time. That was shitty in, in many ways. It's shitty because if you, if you have a release, you can't play it out. You really want to play it out. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and if you have a release, no one else plays your track either because the world is locked out. So no one knows about your song either. So yeah. I think uh, like Automate came out during a weird time. I don't think it did as well as it could have done. Yeah. But yeah, now I can finally fucking go out there and finally get to uh show my tracks man polite like polite was done a long time ago we just kept postponing and postponing the release to find really? a good time yeah so holy shit I, I like i don't know exactly what the time what the original release day was but it was definitely like last year like over, over I, it would have been 10 months ago original release date yeah i mean there is something to be said about house music not being able to be played live when it's released i mean that's like damn near half the reason we all do it i mean we love making yeah. it but you want to send that's that shit the, out well man if you listen if you look at my releases uh the last release on spinning deep on technique they're all they're house tracks but there's they're listening tracks too that's true you can listen to them in the car and not have to just dance to it but polite you know it's more of a dance floor you song. want to bang that shit out live absolutely <laughs> That's exactly. true. That's true. And and you definitely do make music that in my eyes really tiptoes that line, which is difficult to do, which is streamable, but also playable for DJs. And that's a hard level to achieve because it can't be intentional. You know, you, mm -hmm. you make music that's like, oh, this is going to go viral on TikTok or, and that's sometimes we be like, this is going to be a dance floor killer. Like this is going to be something that is going to work. You never really fucking know. That's kind of the truth behind it. And True. the music that you put out the past couple of years, it, it really speaks for itself. And again, it's obvious that you've had fun with it too, because it's just special. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of uh, thought process. The dog is getting agitated. I don't know why. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Didn't like my answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. I know. But I mean, I want to talk about a few of these releases and, um, you know, you can go into as much detail about the inspiration, but got to kick it off. We repopulate Mars. I asked you about this one in the uh, Hood Politics interview because I think it's such a sick EP. Nobody else with um, Dead Space, right? Shout out yeah. Dead Space. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've had Case in on the show. I've talked a lot about repopulate Mars, a lot of producers that have, um, you know, put out on the label. And you just got to give it to Lee Foss uh, for what he's been building in the lane and platform that he's developed for artists like yourself. And South of Saturn as well, too. I mean, this EP is just sick, dude. Like, how much fun did you guys have with it? Oh, man, we, we did. This is like two tracks out of five we did for Repopulate Mars. Because <laughs> uh, originally, nobody else was the first one, but we needed the B-side for it. Yeah. Um, so we were like, shit, all right, let's go. Let's, let's make tracks. And in the end... Uh, Falling, Falling was accepted, but we made like three other tracks that were <laughs> rejected, like straight up. And uh, <laughs> but <laughs> like shit. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, dude, it was super fun. I, what, I remember when I made nobody else specifically. I was very much inspired by uh, whatever uh, Aminaj and Clyde P were doing. Yeah, just I think that was like the start of R and B vocals in Tech House. Like the the amount of R and B vocals in Tech House. Mm -hmm. You know, that was before it just got saturated. Uh, but yeah. so so I, I was super down for 90s, or like late 90s vocals. And uh, so was that, that space. So it's perfect. Yes. It's so sick, man. And that is a fucking hit on the dance floor too, man. That's like, that is on my USB. And you know, DJ to DJ, that's the highest form of a compliment. I didn't yeah, chart that shit on Spotify. I didn't just fucking share that with a friend. That's on the record box playlist, Jaded. All right. All right. <laughs> now you should uh, put it on one thousand and one track list, so we like 
confirm that. I know. Fuck, you're right. Okay, he's he's catching me. But it really is. <laughs> <all it> is. <laughs> but shout out to Repopulate. Shout out to Dead Space. Um, it's such an awesome thing that they're doing there. But um, and we mentioned Nora and Pure. Uh, you remix her track way back in the day, and now since then you released twice on Purified. She supported your music and. Gosh, your tracks there, man. They're so special. We talked about the Soma EP when I interview on Hood Poly and the um, way I feel as well, your recent release in late November. All right, everybody, it's time to listen to this one together. This one's called Way I Feel by Return of the Jaded on Purified. <laughs> just like full circle from those early days dude yeah yeah, yeah. for right. sure i mean so cool. dude i have i have so many projects that are just sitting there that that i i will just pick one day and just rework it and yeah. bring it up to 2022 or 2021 um i have a lot of ideas they just need to be finished yeah so so i'm currently working oh you just muted yourself you muted yourself So but I'm, I'm good. I'm good on the, on the deep melodic stuff. And, and, yeah. I, and I just want to add that when I make a lot of the deeper stuff, it's that takes way more. It's going to sound arrogant, but emotional fatigue. Make those tracks because I yeah. pour my heart and soul into those tracks yeah. when I make them. So they like, like I, I think they're special, but you sing them in a special. That's, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Purified. I mean, it's Nora, dude. It's fucking Nora. Yeah, she, Nora. She's been leaving. And, and like, shout out to Nora so Nora long. for like, yeah. shout out to Nora for like supporting me all these years, man. Like, she got me down. She got me to go to San Francisco, play with her. She got me to play in Montreal. Like, she's a very cool person, man. Honestly. Yeah. And she's doing so well for herself right now too. Like, oh my gosh, she's respect. awesome. The thing that I like most about her is she can be her music and her attitude and her presence can be appreciated by any type of dance music lover. Like I have a friend who, you know, he's like a, a guy from Missouri, you know, like was in a frat, like likes to party, but his favorite producer is, is Nora and pure. And he yeah. freaks out, you know, like she, she like turns people into a, a, a big huggable bear almost, you know? And like, she is just like a special presence in the dance music community and she's great live. She's like, uh, you know, somebody like Lee Foss that gives people a real, real platform. doesn't matter who you are. As long as it's good music, I want to play. Yeah. I want to have it on the label. And, and dude, Nora and Pure fans are hardcore. Like it's a cult. I have, I have it. <laughs> you will see the lights come up in the, in the, the, in the arena or whatever warehouse. And people will just flock to the front and like go crazy just to like take a picture with her, take a photo. He, these she has super fans. She does. And it's great. It's a, it's a you know she's special, man. She's gonna like fucking do crazy shit too in the next ten years. Oh we'll yeah, see. she's far from done. She's got a big big show here coming in Chicago, purified part of her purified tour. And dude, this venue is like forty eight hundred people, and I'm pretty sure it's like already almost sold out. The event's like two months away. Oh yeah, like holy fuck. Exactly. Yeah. People who never will never go out to, to support your show or never goes to tech house shows will go to fucking yes. certified show. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying, Golden. Yes, like she's she's liked by everybody because I mean, who doesn't love a beautiful female DJ playing even more beautiful music? It's special. Yeah, yeah. So, boss lady for sure. She's a boss, dude. Yeah, but I I just I love the Soma EP and the way I feel track is it's awesome, man. Both jaw dropping to me. So. Props to you and shout out to Nora, of course. 
Absolutely. Yeah, man, we'll, we'll try to make more of those, but I, I will try to keep it, um, you know, maybe once or twice a year because I don't want to be known necessarily as a progressive uh, uh, progressive house guy yet. Yeah. Yet, absolutely. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. You're having fun with it, like you said. Exactly. <laughs> okay, next up, my favorite track from you, I'm in love with you on Techni with Melio. I just have to show you this track if you haven't heard it before. I just told you, but I'm going to tell you again. This one's called I'm in Love With You by Return of the Jaded featuring Melio on Techni. another quick story this is one of those songs that gets stuck in my head and i like forget it's stuck in my head and i'll randomly sing it to my fiance dude i'll go i'm in love with you <laughs> what you gonna do she's like what the fuck <laughs> she was like first time she's like Did you just come up with that i was like yeah <laughs> it's so good though dude and that track live is really pumps like it's awesome it's fucking awesome it's such a great track and gotta give a shout out to noisy too um so great though man i mean and that's a little bit different for you too i mean it's very vocal driven it's high energy but it's 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 got a vibe i've been, I've been that's a track that i've been wanting to remake for 10 years yeah I I, I I i because that that's a classic like organ house track from the 90s it was a big Canadian track yeah 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 and I was like, I was like, man, I, I wanted to do this one day. And then I kind of took a shot at it in 2011. I have it on the laptop. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, read something, I was like, let's give this a second try. Let's let's do it again with way more knowledge, way more, you know, I know now how to get that organ sound done properly and so forth. I have a singer now, Melio, who's fucking amazing. Yeah. Every everything just came together to to like finally remake that song properly. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. And it, it was just it, it was it was very easy to make too. Like it, it didn't take very long. Straightforward. Yeah. The baseline is the organ. It's, it's the baseline is the organ with, with a low cut filter on it. I didn't even have to like take a different instrument. That's wow. It's all there. Less Super is more make. approach. Yeah, less is more. Absolutely. Also, yeah. also like super inspired, but by what uh, Gus has been doing yeah but so so like just keep it simple housey mm -hmm. oh yeah absolutely yeah. and that's that's what's doing so well right now too and i mean for a good reason because it's just it's just good music right like you don't have to reinvent the wheel with this shit yeah exactly it's exactly also like i'm gonna sound weird, like arrogant again but like i, I <laughs> find the tech house right now is getting stale again everyone's doing the same thing yeah, Everyone, everyone's trying to be the next like sauce and fucking master. It, it's it's a little too much. Like people need to like think about what's really making people move. You know, it's not necessarily a million sound effects, a million like serum fucking presets here and there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's definitely coming back full circle, and it, I agree with you. It's an exciting time in dance music because as house music producers and house music lovers, there's never been a better time for us. Yeah. But it's also, that's when we need to be innovating, right? Just be original, you know? Like, yeah. there's nothing wrong with doing something that sounds like that, but then be more fucking original than what everyone else is already doing. Yeah. Because you, you, you can't, like, you know, do the same thing that everyone else does and then complain that no one's listening to your shit. Yeah. So true. <laughs> So true. And I mean, it's interesting you say that because you started Return of the Jaded 
and I, and I quote you, this is, this is on your beat for it as a counterculture movement with a desire to offer a fresh alternative to current trends, right? Now your unique style of music is doing incredibly well and is being received on a global front by DJs, fans, labels, producers. And it's because house has come back around. And like I said, you're on the top of that wave. I mean, why do you think house is doing so well right now? House always did so well. Yeah. That's the thing. House, house never went away. When yep. people think that just because I'm beatboard, it wasn't the number one selling thing. It doesn't Fuck mean that beatboard. people were not listening. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't go to far, I wouldn't go as far as saying for beatboard. Uh, but but beatboard doesn't necessarily represent what people actually listen to. That's the thing, right? How house was always there. This guy keeps calling me. This is the 10th time he's calling me. It's crazy. <laughs> um, right now, House is just coming back, I think, because everyone's starting to sound the same in tech house or, or any other genre. So people are going back to the roots all the fucking time because yeah. house music is a root of all dan- and electronic dance music. Yep. Never mind techno. That's a whole different thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. True. It's foundation. It's all based on the disco grooves, you know, like the fucking shuffling go. samples and good, good vibes, positive vibes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to think about making music that really has soul and depth to it. You know, like since I'm in Chicago, the home of house music, I've been listening to some of the first original songs. You know, like Marshall Jefferson, "Move Your Body," and you know, some some Frankie Knuckles mixtapes that I can get my hands on too. And it's just like. I, don't, I can't ask the question, why did that work? Because again, I don't think there is a right answer, but why did people love it? It's because it's carefree. It's like, that's the whole point of music, man, you know, to disconnect exactly. and to become a part of that. So like, what makes me feel like that? You know, a singer, originality, like you said too, that comes with tracks like, um, you know, I'm in love with you, right? Like that's a, that's a play on your own style and what's worked in the past for others, but it's truly original, and, and that's why I love music like that. Mm. Um, I wanted to say something I completely forgot right now. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, guys like Lucati, Lucati. Yes. He's a great, great guy, great producer. He's also going back to more like housey stuff too. Yeah. What is Diplo is going back to house, and Diplo's done every genre imaginable in the world, right? So he's true. done everything, and now he's going back to house again. It's 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 cool, man. I, I I like house. I think house is always going to be there. It's going to evolve with you know better instrument, better production techniques. But mm-hmm. I sent you a track what an hour ago. Yeah. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to it, but I that's did. that's a collab with Dead Space, by the way. Is it? Yeah, that's Dead Space. So like, you're kidding? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have guessed that. Surprise, man. People wow. like Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, that's the cool part to me. I think, you know, in the house music and techno world, you hear about the elitists that say like, oh, I can't believe Tiesto's playing, you know, tech house and Alesso's mm-hmm. producing underground and stuff. And it's like, I think that's a good thing. One, because it gives underground guys, not underground necessarily, but younger guys and newer guys, a chance to have their music heard on bigger stages. And somebody like Diplo, who's an incredibly talented producer who has done so many different types of genres, he can pull an artist from a different genre and challenge himself creatively to make something that's so original. And and that's why I think it's a really exciting time for producers right now, because collaboration has never been more like fluid and and hot. I don't know how to describe it. It's finally come to a point where, where, where a producer, a DJ, whatever, is not stuck to one genre. It, yeah. It can involve multiple different things. And people are open-minded to it. And that's the most important thing. It's that people are receptive to it. Yes. And that's fucking cool. LPGOB, right? She can do a lot of different genres. Uh, yeah. Mary Droppins. Yes. She's super into the breaks, break beats too. Which is, you know, Mary, I, love break beats. I just I don't, I don't know. Personally, I know her music though. I just had her on a few weeks ago, dude. She's oh, fucking nice. awesome. Yeah, she's got break beats. She's got rave shit. She's got disco. Like, I had so yeah. much fun talking to her about it. And you guys have a lot of similarities when it comes to just, like, trying to be original and, and making what you love. Like, there's no limits to this shit. Have fun with it. Exactly. 
but it, so it's a really exciting time for music in that sense you're you're like on point when it, when it comes to that yeah so so to producers out there now is a good time to fucking experiment and yep. do some cool shit yes yeah. absolutely absolutely what do, what do you got coming out that you can tell us about right now i know one this track with yeah. dj susan he told me where it's coming out today i don't know if you guys are allowed to say it but i've been <laughs> dropping it and it's fucking juicy <laughs> yeah i don't know if we can say where it comes out or when it comes out but it rhymes with uh <laughs> mouse crap <laughs> <laughs> dude it's such a sick track golden like for real i dropped yeah. it at um where did i drop it at i dropped it on a proper sound system and that first hit when it's like boom i literally went like put my hands up and then the bass somehow brought my arms down i was like boom whoa <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's it's, funny. it's awesome. It's awesome, dude, for real. Thanks, dude. I can't wait to uh, tell people all about it, show people what it's all about. That that was made specifically for the dance floor. So yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, how much fun is it collabing with DJ Susan? It was so fun to make a track with him. He's very easy going, right? Very easy to work with. So it's, it's it was great, and he he got excited about. Every, every little clip I sent them, which made me excited about sending a clip. It's like an awkward spiral effect. Yes, totally. Uh, you send him some stems, and then he calls you, oh, this is fucking sick. Hold on, give me 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sends you a sound guy like, what do you think? What do you think? It's like, let me listen. Let me listen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's fucking funny. Yeah, well, he came, he came up with the original idea, which is fucking awesome. And the ball yeah. works, and I just like perfected that concept and just made the, the big ass break that you know all about i do yeah, dude. get ready excited to show the world yeah man i think i think i think in march i'll be able to show clips of it so stay tuned okay. for that what do you have anything you can tell us about right now yes Hit me. well the track i sent you with that space yeah that space again um i have another big collaboration coming out on spin and deep it's going to be a huge, huge tune, I think. I don't want to, you know, pump my own, pump my tires, but I think it's going to do well. Just because the sample is such a massive sample. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even a sample. It's a fucking cover. It's a cover. It's not even a sample. But it, it took like, you know, it took some time getting it cleared, and blah, blah, blah. So okay. now it's time to let's fucking go putting it out there and show people what it is. Yeah, I can't. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't think I can tell you more right now. That's but, okay. That's sorry, okay. Dude. You told us the label. Is it resung then, or is it a true cover? It's like, re-sung. It's re-sung. okay, gotcha. Fuck yeah. It's resung by Melio. Shout out Melio. Love but Melio. Yeah, very talented singer too. So Fuck yes, you made it possible. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What else? All right. I think I, that's all I can say for now, but 2022 is going to be a good year for music. Yes. And we can we can see you on tour. I mean, by the time this comes out, you'll have already played in Seattle, but you're DJing yeah. a lot more now, obviously. Yeah, Vancouver, March 26th at right. a warehouse party. Fuck yeah. LA, July 2nd. Yep. Loving Life Festival. And then back to Ottawa, July 3rd with Gene Ferris and Sivs, Alex and Wood and all the homies. It's going to be awesome. Let's go, bro. Chicago loves you, don't they? I don't know. I love Chicago too, man. <laughs> have you been here before? No, I have not. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we let gotta me give you the poly something. treatment. We gotta work something out. Absolutely, bro. I'll hit up Tom. I will give you, I will try and top DJ Susan San Diego experience here for you. Oh, yeah. All you're right. Gonna eat, you're gonna it, eat a lot more probably than you did in San Diego here because we got the best. Uh, yeah, dude, that's it doesn't take much to eat more <laughs> than I'm I, I doubt you did much eating. Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. But the weird thing is no one no one stopped being like, yo, maybe you should maybe you should eat something. No, no one no one thought of that. No one thought of ordering pizza. No one thought of I guess we had liquid bread. 
and that was enough to keep us going. There's <laughs> yeast, there's yeast and alcohol. That's what it was. And then yeah, exactly. it turns exactly. into food. <laughs> Hundred gallons for beer. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Bro, this has been so much fun, man. I really appreciate you taking some time. I know you're really busy, but um I genuinely mean it when I say I'm a massive fan and it's just so cool to see you killing it. And I know you got a big year ahead of you and an even brighter future past then. So thank you. Thanks for having me, man. It's always a good time talking to you. So of course, bro. I can't wait till we can hang out in person soon. And uh, for those that listen all the way through, thanks for listening. Return, 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 return of the jaded. <laughs> Absolutely. See you in Chicago, man. Let's make that happen. For sure. Absolutely, bro. I'm down to make that happen. Let's definitely, let's get an email chain going and I'll help make it, make it come down. Let's do it. Beauty. All right, brother. You have a good night. Thanks so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Hey, what's up? And thanks for watching that video. You looking for more content now? I got your back. Go to my YouTube channel right now, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you turn on all notifications so you never miss any upcoming exclusive artist interviews, Sherman the Booth clips, new music, live sets, and more. This is your one-stop shop for everything electronic music. Cheers.